Welcome back. Uh, we have been in the last uh, few lectures looking at the effect of chemical reaction on uh, mass transfer and we first did this uh, within the framework of the film theory um, and we found that the effect of the reaction can be studied in uh, order of uh, uh, increasing severity of reaction uh, and uh, the various possibilities fall into several regimes. So, the reaction can be very slow relative to mass transfer in which case we have the slow reaction regime in which the uh, reaction takes place essentially within the bulk of the liquid and uh, the film has the uh, role of simply conducting the solute from the gas liquid interface to the bulk where it reacts. So, in that sense the uh, film and the bulk operate in series here. The film has uh, uh, diffusion and the uh, bulk has reaction and the diffusion and reaction operate in series. Now, as often happens when uh, uh, rate processes take place in series, it is the um, slowest uh, rate, uh, rate process that dictates the overall uh, course of events. In other words, the overall driving force that is there uh, is partitioned in such a way that the greatest share of the driving force is available to that process which has the highest specific resistance. Uh, so, this using this principle the uh, slow reaction regime gets further subdivided into a kinetic sub regime and a diffusional sub regime. The kinetic sub regime being one in which the reaction is by far the uh, uh, much higher resistance uh, the, as compared to the mass transfer and in the diffusional sub regime the diffusional resistance or the mass transfer step is the one which provides the greatest resistance and therefore, is the controlling resistance. So, that is a slow reaction regime and as the reactions uh, become faster and faster, um, the occurrence of the reaction within the film that is simultaneously with diffusion can no longer be ignored and we have the um, transition to what we call as the fast reaction regime, which itself is a situation in which reaction and uh, diffusion are taking place completely in parallel. There is nothing happening in the bulk the bulk just acts as an inventory of the um, liquid phase reactant and serves to store the uh, reaction product, but otherwise every uh, everything that is of concern to us is actually happening within the diffusion film. And as the reaction becomes faster and faster, the um, concentration profile of B starts to develop uh, inside uh, the diffusion film. In other words, variation in concentration of B within the diffusion film can no longer be uh, neglected and the reaction transits towards what is called as the instantaneous reaction and the instantaneous reaction is an extreme situation in which there is no region in the liquid which contains both A and B because the two uh, are um, so prone to react that the moment A and B uh, are present in the same place they annihilate each other and produce the reaction product. So, uh, obviously, the reaction can take place only at a plane to which uh, from the interface the mass transfer process supplies A and from the bulk the mass transfer process supplies B and the supply of A and B is coordinated in such a way that they uh, arrive at the reaction plane uh, in the uh, ratio in which they are required by the reaction stoichiometry. And uh, so, this requirement fixes the position of the reaction plane and the position of the reaction plane in turn fixes the uh, magnitude of the enhancement factor that is possible. And this of course, is the maximum enhancement factor that is available to a system given the concentrations of B and the concentration of A and so on. So, this is the sequence of regimes that uh, a reaction goes through as uh, the reaction velocity becomes higher and higher within the framework of the film theory. And, uh, uh, in the last lecture, we started looking at the uh, effect of reaction within the framework of the surface renewal theories and in order to keep the discussion uh, simple and uh, uniform, uh, we decided to um, ignore the differences between the uh, Higbee's version of the surface, surface renewal theory and the Dankworth's version of the surface renewal theory by defining a characteristic time tau which has two different connotations, slightly different connotations in the Higbee and the Dankworth's version of the uh, surface renewal theories. So, this characteristic time was used to non-dimensionalize the time in the um, uh, diffusion reaction equations and we saw that um, the uh, there is a place for something like the slow reaction within the framework of the surface renewal theories as well, because 
it uh, is a situation in which once again the reaction is so slow that within the lifetime of the surface element there is not too much reaction that uh, occurs and therefore, uh, the concentration profiles develop just as if the reaction were not there. So, the of course, the physical mass transfer coefficient does not change because it is governed by exactly the same equations as in the case of the uh, uh, physical mass transfer. And uh, so, we uh, arrive at a situation where the surface process is exactly the same as in the case of physical mass transfer. As a result of this surface process by the time a surface element leaves the interface, it has a certain amount of A inside it. This A is delivered into the uh, bulk where it now reacts. So, in order to understand the effect of reaction, we go back to having to make uh, a uh, balance for the solute A within the liquid bulk and of course, this works exactly the same way as uh, uh, it does in the uh, film theory, because what happens in the bulk is uh, not subject to the film theory or the uh, surface renewal theory. It is outside the ambit of both of these theories. It is a simple balance which says that whatever is delivered by the mass transfer uh, is consumed by the uh, chemical reaction, if the bulk can be assumed to be in a kind of quasi steady state. So, everything that we said uh, for slow reactions in the ambit of the uh, film theory applies verbatim to the case of uh, the surface renewal theories. And uh, therefore, um, uh, we again can define a, a diffusional sub regime and a kinetic sub regime. Therefore, there is uh, nothing different uh, about the slow reaction regime, whether you talk about the slow reaction regime uh, from a film theory standpoint or from a surface renewal theory standpoint. Of course, we must remember in all this that um, we are considering those reactions which can be uh, while being second order can be considered to be in a pseudo first order kind of situation, because the rate of supply of B to the places where the reaction occurs is uh, so much larger than the rate at which B needs to be supplied uh, in order to um, account for the reaction um, in proportion to in stoichiometric proportion to the rate of supply of A and therefore, the concentration of profile of uh, concentration profile of B is essentially flat right up to the interface throughout the uh, lifetime of the um, surface element. So, we will con continue our uh, discussions and um, go to uh, situations where the reaction is now uh, of such a velocity that it does make a difference to the uh, diffusion process within the film. In other words, what we are saying is uh, we are looking at let us say faster reactions, faster in the sense of these reactions do take place to an appreciable extent within the lifetime of the element and therefore, they can no longer be ignored. So, the kind of situation we are considering is m far less than q, which ensures a pseudo first order regime and m is of the order of 1. Okay. So, under these situations, we have to solve in non dimensional terms this equation that we have written earlier of course there is a b there which becomes equal to 1 and uh, the relevant initial and boundary conditions are at theta equal to 0 a is ab and this is equal to 0 in most practical situations for reasons that we have elaborated earlier and we shall make this assumption. We will not solve this equation for the general case of uh, uh, non-zero a b and for zeta equal to 0 a is 1 and as zeta tends to infinity a is a b which is once again 0. Now, this is a uh, much nastier equation than the equation that we solved in the case of uh, film theory for a similar situation, because that was a uh, steady state theory. Right? Uh, this is a partial differential equation, but uh, there is a way of solving this, which was uh, introduced by Dankwartz.
and we shall simply indicate what this method is and leave the details to be worked out by you. Um, so, this essentially constructs the solution from the case of pure diffusion. That is what uh, Dankwart says is that if a 1 of zeta and theta solves in other words if a 1 is a solution to the pure diffusion problem which is d a 1 by d theta partial equals d squared a 1 by d zeta 1 squared. Then, so this is subject to the usual ICBC. Okay. Then, you, you can construct this quantity A in the following manner m integral of integral from 0 to theta sorry uh, a 1 e to the power minus m t dash where t dash is a dummy integration variable d t dash plus a 1 e to the power minus m theta. So, this solves the diffusion reaction equation. with the same I C and B C's. So, in other words, if you know the solution to this equation with uh, uh, the initial and boundary, initial boundary conditions that we have set out earlier, uh, then we can construct the solution to the diffusion reaction equation by transforming the a 1 in this manner the solution to the pure diffusion equation in that manner the same initial and boundary conditions apply. And as we have seen the initial and boundary conditions do not change whether there is reaction or there is no reaction and uh, we already know the solution of uh, uh, this one which is the pure diffusion equation it is the error function complementary solution that we have written earlier and uh, therefore, we can use this method in order to calculate the solution of the diffusion reaction equation. So, when we do that, so I leave the details of that integration to you, uh, but the essential um, result is that the concentration profile of A that is assuming that A b equal to 0 concentration profile of A is half e to the power minus square root of m zeta error function complement of eta minus square root of m theta plus half e to the power positive root m zeta error function complement eta plus square root of m theta, where this eta is the same combination variable that we have defined earlier and it is this quantity here. So, we know the concentration profile and uh, from the concentration profile we can calculate the instantaneous um, uh, mass transfer uh, flux as in non dimensional in dimensional terms it is d c a divided by d x equal to evaluated at x equal to 0. So, we can do this and um, so once we do that 
then we have two options we can choose IFT for the Higby or we can choose IFT for Dankwards and we arrive at the average NA. So, this is the process. So, if we did this, we arrive at uh, an equation which uh, is compared with the film theory equation in this slide here. So, we have already seen that the film theory gives you enhancement factor is equal to square root of m divided by tan h square root of m. If we did the, the if we go through the process that I described on the previous uh, slide, then uh, we and use the Higby's IFT function in order to average out the instantaneous rates and compare that with the physical mass transfer rate, we find that the enhancement factor is given by this fairly complex expression as compared to what we see here. But on the other hand, the Dankwitz surface renewal theory gives a particularly simple expression for uh, the uh, enhancement factor uh, that is square root of 1 plus uh, square of the Hutta number 1 plus m. Now, while these expressions look very, very different, it turns out that uh, if you actually put in the values of root m and calculate the numbers, they are not all that different. So, we illustrate that by making these calculations and comparing them for the slow to fast transition regime in this plot here, where the Hatta number is varied uh, in the range of importance to us that is from root m equal to 1 to root m of about 5 or so and the enhancement factors um, are plotted and this scale goes from 1 to about 5.5. And uh, we have the Higby theory and the Dankworth theory and the film theory compared here and the Higby and the Dankworth theory virtually fall on top of each other there is that is the upper curve here and uh, um, the lower curve is the film theory. So, the film theory predicts slightly lower enhancements as compared to um, the uh, surface renewal theories and the surface renewal theories pretty much agree in as far as the magnitude of the enhancement factor is concerned. And uh, the difference is actually very, very small it is it is about a few percent um, you know it is about uh, 7 to 8 percent uh, at the maximum and uh, you know uh, at both ends the differences tend to narrow narrow out and uh, as you proceed in this direction you are going to the uh, slow reaction regime and uh, therefore there the enhancement factor is 1 and as you go towards the um, higher reaches of this uh, curve that is as enhancement as hatta number becomes faster and faster once again the uh, curves approach each other and there is a particular reason why um, the curves become uh, more and more identical as enhancement factor increases and as we know for uh, as the Hatta number increases and as we know for Hatta number greater than 3, we have uh, the fast reaction regime within the framework of the film theory and we shall show in a moment that the uh, case of the uh, surface renewal theories also predicts the same kind of situation and in fact, it agrees identically in as far as its quantitative predict prediction of the enhancement factor for that situation is concerned. But before we do that, let us try to understand from a point of view of uh, uh, a physical understanding as to how the uh, concentration profiles are developing in the case of the slow to fast uh, regime transition. In other words, when we when our reaction is uh, kind of fast enough to be taken into consideration while solving the um, processes in the uh, surface element. So, let us look at those concentration profiles again. So, this is our uh, zeta and this is our concentration profile of A and the concentration profile of B throughout is 1 that is because it is a pseudo first order. Okay. Now, let us uh, let us look at these concentration profiles. If you look at a short time 
then the concentration profile of A will be something like this. At slightly longer times, it will be like this. At even longer times, it will be like this. Okay. Now, let us look at what is the effect of chemical reaction. So, this is what I have drawn here. These uh, black curves are physical mass transfer that is there is no reaction taking place. Now, what is the effect of chemical reaction? At every distance, the cons at the same time, we would expect the concentration to be lower than in the case of physical mass transfer, because some of the uh, A is being consumed by chemical reaction. In other words, for this time, the concentration profile might look like this. For this time, the concentration profile in the presence of chemical reaction may look like this and for this time the concentration profile might look at this. So, what happens is the longer the, the uh, uh, element spends uh, at the surface, the greater is the difference between the red curve and the black curve. So, the red curve is the case of mass transfer with first order chemical reaction. So, there is another way of visualizing this situation. So, what I just said was that the longer the uh, element spends at the interface, the greater is the difference at a given distance uh, of the concentration it would have uh, as compared to the concentration it would have uh, in the case of uh, physical mass transfer, because this is a cumulative effect. The longer it spends, greater is the amount that uh, uh, gets consumed. So, we can visualize this situation in another manner. The uh, mass transfer process is trying to push these concentration profiles, it is getting to uh, getting A to penetrate deeper and deeper into the uh, uh, surface element. On the other hand, reaction is trying to consume it and therefore, it tries to push it more and more towards the gas liquid interface itself. In other words, mass transfer tends to uh, push the gas into the liquid, the reaction tends to consume it and prevent it from going further into the um, surface element. So, the net result of these two processes which are uh, at loggerheads with each other, you can imagine is that the concentration profile does not proceed, does not get to proceed at the same rate as it would. Uh, in the case of physical mass transfer. In other words, it lags behind. So, a limiting situation can be imagined in which the, uh, the tendency of the mass transfer to push the rate into the uh, push the concentration profile into the surface element is exactly balanced by the tendency of the reaction to keep it from going forward at some stage and therefore, uh, the, the um, concentration profiles achieve some kind of a steady state. In other words, there are two opposing tendencies, one of which tends to get the gas to penetrate deeper into the uh, system, the other of which uh, tends to prevent this from happening. The two tendencies will uh, uh, operate at equal rates at some stage and at some point during the surface, uh, during the life of the surface element, the profile will stop from moving any further. In other words, so, it will move like this and at a later time it will not be much different from this and so on. Right? Now, the time at which this kind of a steady state occurs depends on the value of the value the, um, surf the uh, diffusion reaction parameter or the Hutta number. So, we can say the larger we can make the statement the larger the value of root m the sooner does a steady state occur. Now, this is a statement of some consequence, because you can imagine a situation in which the root m value is so large that the steady state happens very early in the life of the surface element. If that happens, the surface element is going to spend a certain amount of time at the gas liquid interface, much of the time is being uh, spent in this steady state that we are talking about. And therefore, 
in the uh, uh, when it comes to averaging the local rate or the instantaneous rate with respect to time you are essentially averaging a time independent instantaneous rate the steady state uh, uh, instantaneous rate. So, if this is the situation that if the, this is the limiting situation we are interested in that situation is essentially governed by this equation if root m is sufficiently large then we can say that we are essentially solving this equation which is the steady state equation with there is no initial condition required for this one zeta equal to 0 a equal to 1 and zeta tending to infinity a equal to 0. Now, if you look at this, this is exactly the same as the film theory equation for fast reaction. So, in order to just recollect that one, we will uh, just spend a minute trying to see what the fast reaction was for the case of film theory. So, if you recall, this was the in the film theory. So, this was uh, zeta equal to 1 that is the end of the film, this is zeta equal to 0. And in general, the concentration profile of it within the film theory looks something like this and as far as this diffusing uh, solute is concerned because it is not going beyond a certain uh, distance which lies within the film the uh, effective thickness of the film is infinite as far as the diffusing solute is concerned. In other words, so this situation is uh, we have written the equation with the far uh, far boundary condition as zeta tending to infinity a equal to 0 and d a by d zeta equal to 0. The concentration and the flux both go to 0 as the uh, uh, distance increases and for all practical purposes the end of the film could be uh, it does not matter if it is there or there or there because the concentration profile does not know where the end of the film is. So, we have an interesting situation that uh, we have these two theories one is a steady state theory and it works in a finite field between uh, x is equal to 0 and x is equal to delta and then there is the uh, other theory the surface renewal variety of theories which are unsteady state theories and they work in a semi infinite field the diffusion occurs in a semi infinite field bounded by the gas liquid interface at x is equal to 0, but really stretching to infinity on the other side. Now, it turns out that this is a situation the fast reaction uh, uh, situation is one in which the governing equations for the two theories become identical. So, this should not be surprising because uh, for two reasons one is if you recall the, uh, 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 the uh, resulting equations for the film theory treatment we found that the results are independent of delta that is because of course, uh, what I said just a moment ago that delta does not matter for the diffusing solute under these situations. Once it is independent of delta which is a construct of the theory the resulting equations are essentially independent of hydrodynamics and hydrodynamics or the effect of hydrodynamics is the is the uh, a precise point on which the film theory and the surface renewal theory. Um, have very different types of perceptions of the gas liquid mass transfer process. Put another way what is happening here is that we have the uh, film theory operating in the uh, 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 finite field that is between the diffusion takes place between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to delta. In the fast reaction regime for all practical purposes the x is equal to de delta might as well lie at infinity therefore, the finiteness of the diffusion field does not matter for the uh, diffusion process. On the other hand, so in that respect the film theory becomes uh, something similar to the uh, surface renewal theories at least in, far as in, in so far as 
the mathematical formulation is concerned. On the other hand, the surface renewal theory, which is an unsteady state theory, becomes essentially a steady state theory because the fast reaction is uh, such a situation in which the reaction profile is arrested from uh, proceeding in a time dependent manner into the uh, liquid very early in the lifetime of the surface element. And therefore, uh, for substantial part of the uh, life at the uh, gas liquid interface, the gas liquid uh, the surface element is absorbing the gas as if it were a steady state process. So, it is a steady state process taking place in a semi infinite field as far as the surface renewal theory is concerned, it is a steady state process taking place in a, um, uh, sem a semi infinite field as far as the film theory is concerned. So, the two processes become identical. So, needless to say since we are solving the same equations, we expect the same results and um, so for fast reaction. So, this is what is called as the fast reaction within the surface renewal theory. So, the definition of the fast reaction in the surface renewal theory is that it is a situation in which the surface element essentially absorbs in a steady state uh, uh, manner uh, for a majority of its uh, stay at the gas liquid interface. We expect no difference uh, to be made by the choice of the IFT function, because whether it is um, uh, surface renewal theory uh, of the Higby variety or surface renewal theory of the Dank versus variety, we are averaging essentially a time independent function with respect to the um, uh, a weighting function. And the weighting function itself is normalized therefore, um, in other words what I am saying is if n a i of t is constant independent of n a i, then your average rate is n a i of t i of t d t 0 to infinity, this is n a i 0 to infinity i of t d t and this is nothing but n a i itself, the average rate and the instantaneous rate agree because it is a steady state process, there is nothing to be averaged. So, um, we can now come back to the question that uh, I raised very early in our consideration of um, the effect of chemical reactions on uh, the mass transfer process. And I said that uh, while uh, the um, comparison of experimental data with the theories seems to suggest that the film theory is less accurate than the surface renewal theory in terms of uh, the way it pictures the processes at the gas liquid interface. Uh, we have seen in, in so far as the prediction of the effect of uh, chemical reaction on the mass transfer coefficient or in other words uh, in so far as the prediction of the enhancement factor uh, is concerned, there is a slow reaction regime in which the two, uh, two theories behave identically and there is a fast reaction regime in which uh, once again the two theories behave identically. So, in order to picture this on the enhancement factor Hata number diagram, we have uh, a Hata number of 1 and out here is the uh, slow reaction regime and around about 1 the curve starts to lift off and we have about 3. Incidentally, if you look at the um, way in which the equations work for the uh, surface renewal theories, it is once again a value of 3 or 4 that uh, um, around, around which the um, equations become independent of time, the um, instantaneous absorption rate becomes essentially independent of time very early in the surface uh, uh, elements age and therefore, the fast the precepts of the fast reaction regime start applying from a value of about root m equal to 3. So, that is clear from uh, a numerical calculation that becomes clear from a numerical calculation of the um, uh, enhancement factor from the um, transition regime equations. So, we have we have E equal to root m here and from whatever we said earlier we have the surface renewal theory is there and
the film theory here. In other words, this is the film theory and that is the surface renewal theory. In other words, the theories are identical in this region, the theories are identical in that region. In between, you can always uh, expect that uh, the theories are not going to uh, be very different because it is only a small region that we are considering and uh, given that you are holding the two curves to uh, definite asymptotes at the two ends, there is only so much they can do in between and uh, if you actually work out the numbers as we saw in this earlier curve as we saw in, in this plot here, uh, the difference between them is rather small and uh, therefore, we can continue to use either expression for uh, the enhancement factor in the um, in this region in the. So, this region is the transition region transition slow to fast. So, then uh, why do we need to? So, we now take up the um, opposite question of. So, we, we were asking why are we looking at film theory at all if film theory is not accurate and we know surface renewal theories to be the uh, better theories and the answer is now clear that uh, the film theory uh, gives the same results as the surface renewal theory over a large part of the um, uh, Hatta number range and we shall see what happens as we go to even larger Hatta numbers in a moment. And uh, it is a much simpler theory to uh, conceptualize and solve and therefore, we use the film theory. So, the alternative question is uh, why do we then worry about the uh, surface renewal theories at all at least in so far as what we have seen uh, uh, so far goes. The answer to that is uh, you have seen that the equations that result from the th three theories are of different uh, uh, complexities and this and the equations all look different. I mean we go back to these three expressions that we showed. Okay, There is the film theory expression, there is the Higby expression and there is the Dankwartz's expression. And this is sometimes of advantage because um, you can use the um, equation that suits your purpose from the point of view of mathematical convenience in order to design experiments and in order to calculate uh, uh, quantities of interest. To take an example, uh, the Dankwartz's theory leads to the use of what is called as Dankwartz's plot for determining K L and A separately. Now, this is usually a, a tough ask because uh, you either have situations in which you can only determine K L A as a product or you can uh, you have situations in which you can determine only interfacial area that is the fast reaction regime. But uh, if you think about it in the diffusional sub regime of the slow reaction regime which is the one that uh, that happens before the reaction becomes fast enough to occur in the film. You have a uh, rate that depends on K L A the product of the mass transfer coefficient and the interfacial area. And on the other extreme, uh, when it goes completely into the fast reaction, you have a rate that depends only on the interfacial area that, uh, uh, that does not depend on the mass transfer coefficient at all. So, it stands to reason to expect that in between that is in the transition from slow to fast reaction regime, the rate of reaction should depend on K L A as a product as well as on the interfacial area. So, in other words both K L and A independently influence the rate in the transition regime. Now, this is while this can be anticipated the expression that uh, uh, we use that we have derived for this regime is not very convenient to extract K L and A independently if you consider the film theory expression or the Higby's expression. On the other hand the Dankwartz's expression allows you to do this and uh, that is the matter that I want to just spend a couple of minutes on. So, if you write the rate expression for Dankwartz's theory, it is of course, K L A C 
CA star multiplied by the enhancement factor which is in the Dankworth's theory 1 by m. So, if I take R a by C a and square it, then what I have is square of k l a plus square of k l a times m. Now, so this is square of k l a plus a square k l square will cancel with the k l square in the denominator in m and therefore, we are left with d a k c b b the pseudo first order rate constant. So, what this allows us to do is um, if you can vary the pseudo first order rate constant either by varying c b b or by making use of a catalyst in different amounts which causes a variation in k itself and this is this is possible for very many reaction systems then you can plot for different values of the pseudo first order rate constant you can plot r a by c a star squared versus k c b b and if you do this then you have a slope from which you can get interfacial area and you have an intercept from which you can get k l a. So, this is the advantage of the Dankworth's expression and given that it gives you uh, results which are uh, numerically almost the same as any other um, uh, theory this can be used to advantage in the characterization of mass transfer equipment. Okay. So, we shall uh, leave the fast reaction regime behind at that point and look at the situation that arises uh, when the reactions that we are uh, considering are even faster than um, what we have considered so far. So, the only assumption that has remained with us so far is the fact that the Hatta number is much less than uh, q or m is less than uh, much less than q. Uh, so, if this as m becomes larger and larger as uh, the reaction becomes faster and faster this assumption has to be violated at some point. So, now we consider situations in which situations for which it is not true that m is far less than q. Okay, so, this assumption is violated. So, let us uh, it is clear that uh, 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 you know the uh, equations have to be solved without any simplification at this uh, for this case in which uh, uh, by which what I mean is you have got the second order uh, partial differential equation for A, you have the second order partial differential equation for B. These are coupled because uh, the equation for A contains the concentration of B and the equation for B contains the concentration of A there is a certain set of initial and boundary conditions. So, this coupled set of nonlinear partial differential equations has to be solved for the case of m uh, not equal I mean m not much less than q. This is of course, not a easy task it is not possible to do this by analytical means and you have to solve this by uh, um, numerical techniques, but let us uh, consider physically what is happening much as we did in the case of the um, film theory. So, that uh, we will see for are there any extreme situations that we can identify in which we can derive uh, solutions for a much simpler set of equations. So, we have these you know we already are in the um, fast reaction regime and this is the concentration profile and if this is the situation if uh, m is comparable to q then what happens is that the concentration profile of q is no longer flat I mean concentration profile for B is no longer flat and it um, decreases into the film. So, now the unsteady state nature of the uh, uh, process comes into the fore once again because the concentration profile of A has developed to uh, an extent, but because of that B is consumed to a little extent uh, near the interface because of which the reaction is slowed down the 
concentration profile can push a little further, the concentration profile becomes deeper and so on. So, as time goes on, you have situations of the profile developing in this manner. Now, what happens is at some stage during the life of the surface element, this concentration profile of B can hit the um, interface at B equal to 0. In other words, B is completely consumed at the interface and later on what happens is that there is a region that develops close to the interface which contains no B. Much as we uh, uh, saw in the case of the film theory except that uh, in this case, the uh, events are happening as a function of time within the same surface element. Now, all this can happen pretty much uh, pretty early in the life of a surface element if m is much larger than q. So, in that situation, so if we take an extreme situation, then what happens is there is a region in which A is present, there is a region in which B is present they do not overlap because the reaction is so fast that the, um, the two meet and annihilate each other consume each other at a, uh, at a plane and this plane moves forward into the film as the um, surface element ages more and more. In other words, you may have a situation like this at short time and a situation like this at long time. So, this is the, so this is zeta, zeta, so this is theta increasing and this is A and this is B, right. So, we have a situation in which virtually throughout the life of the element, in other words the surface element comes to the, the liquid element comes to the surface, at that instant the B at the uh, interface is completely consumed. So, the concentration of B falls to 0 uh, instantaneously the moment B reaches the interface. Because there is no B now, A can proceed a little into the film and uh, so the point at which B com becomes 0 moves into the film. So, B is consumed at that point, now A can push a little further and so on that is how you get this uh, progression of uh, profiles. So, now what is the uh, if you take this uh, central central curve for example, let us look at this. Now, this is a region which contains A, this is a region that contains B and the two regions are separated by the reaction plane which is not stationary as in the case of film theory, but the position uh, reaction plane is at a position zeta 1 which changes with theta because this is an unsteady state theory. So, the governing uh, differential equations for this case look as follows. In region A, we have d A upon d theta equals d squared a upon d zeta squared pure diffusion equation because there is no reaction that can take place there, there is no B and so this applies between the interface and the reaction plane. In region B, so this region A only exists for times greater than 0 and for region B you have a similar equation except that you have the ratio d A by d B and this applies between the reaction plane and infinity. So, these are the two equations and uh, the um, initial and boundary conditions work the same way except that at the reaction plane at zeta equal to zeta 1 of theta, we have A equal to 0 and B equal to 0 and the fluxes have to be matched. 
So, the condition that uh, determines at what position the reaction occurs is this condition that nu times the flux of A equals the flux of B in the opposite direction. This is the same condition that we applied in the case of uh, the film theory, but uh, since now uh, the partial derivatives of the concentration with respect to x are time dependent, this gives you a solution for uh, zeta 1 that depends on time. Now, this is what is known in uh, uh, mathematics as a moving boundary problem in the partial differential equation theory as a moving boundary problem and it is not easy to solve, but it can be solved analytically because it is a much simpler equation although it looks complicated, it is much simpler as compared to the situation in which you had the reaction term in uh, both the equations and that brings about a non-linearity. So, these equations are linear and if you look at the equations you would suspect that they would have error function type solutions and so you can formulate an error function solution for this with two uh, constants, an error function solution for this with two additional constants and these four constants have to be uh, evaluated by the application of the initial and boundary conditions and this condition, this pair of conditions which fixes the value of zeta 1 of theta. Okay. So, this solution is of course, uh, uh, the mathematical details of this solution we will not go through, it is available in books such as uh, Dankworth's book on uh, gas liquid reactions and uh, or even uh, Burr Stewart Lightfoot, uh, the book on transport phenomena. But what we will do when we come back is uh, we shall look at the um, uh, final results of this treatment, the, the solution what it leads to and what are the implications of that and how those situations compare with uh, the situation for. So, this is what we have uh, formulated is the case of the instantaneous reaction within the framework of the uh, surface renewal theories. So, we have the instantaneous reaction within the framework of the film theory and we shall compare the results of these two theories when we come back.